It's recording. So uh, I'm going to try something new here. Um, let's see. Um, my name's Dave, and I've I'm the owner of the one of the only Scanimates, and I'm in the process of working on uh, a chassis that appeared in my shop magically somehow um, and I'm also kind of new at using this little uh, black magic switcher so you'll have to excuse me um, let's see camera two this is the uh, the chassis and you might be able to notice the little Scanimate logo there. That is the uh, CPU chassis to a Scanimate, which looks like that. This uh, chassis right here was called the CPU chassis. It was kind of the original first thing they built when they were developing it as I understand it but um, this one has, <clears throat> has been without the rest of a Scanimate for a while and it has some extra wiring up in here I mean Scanimate wiring I've, I've forgotten the guy's name that did all the wiring but it's just an incredible wiring job there between the the back of the front panel and the, all the cards that went in it. And um, so I have uh, been working on prototyping one of the missing boards. Let me show you my, uh, apologize for the camera angles. I'll turn on the power supply that provides plus and minus 15 and 5 volts. This is a completely variable rate sink generator that uh, my friend Tom lent me to play with. And... Uh, this is my Chinesium scope. It does a it does a pretty good job. I prefer analog scopes, but there are a lot of things digital scopes do that uh, are nice. And then this is the uh, little HP XY display. Uh, it's, it's a pretty nice little display. I'm familiar with the electronics in it because it's basically what we used when we built Versifex. But it has this built-in graticule, which is fine if you're doing using it as a test instrument, if you're trying to do animation with it. So this is what's coming out of the chassis. I've got some really noisy pots here. This is this is the final position in X and Y. Boy, I really need to squirt some juice in those. And then uh, you can adjust the size of the ramps. And I've even got a, an oscillator connected to the, the width. These are nice little oscillators. You can uh, let it run free and, and it will drift very slowly. For some reason the uh, video on this monitor is inverted. So what's supposed to be black shows up white. This would look more like the regular grid, but that's actually got the video inverted. 
and I don't have any blanking to this monitor yet. It does a pretty good job. It focuses all right. That particular type of CRT is uh, not known to have a really small spot size because of the way they to get all that additional deflection they had to use a negative electron lens which is kind of like squirting a, a hose through a screen door that was the way one of my CRT friends termed it so uh, it's it's missing what's called the sequence board because if you've seen some of my uh, videos about the basics of the Scanimate you've got an initial and a final which is controlled with this switch here and what what that amounts to is like a ramp and so a bunch of settings are in initial it's like a two keyframe thing so you set your initial settings and then you set your final settings and then when you trigger the switch depending on the speed of the ramp it will make a smooth transition from all those initial settings to all those final settings and uh, that's that's basically what you do for animation it's just a real simple begin and end two keyframe setup um, in the machine itself my little rig here is kind of sketchy in the machine itself you've got four different thumb wheel switches and five different ramps so when you toggle the sequence switch the first ramp goes and then the second ramp goes and the speed of the ramp is set with this pot and uh, the number of frames between toggling the initial final switch and when it starts is dialed in with the thumb wheel switch and so in effect that gives you the capability of having like five keyframes or six keyframes actually um, between when you toggle the switch and when everything finally lands so uh, at any rate even just the one basic um, initial final keyframe is this card in uh, no I'm sorry it's down here J6 and so that's a lot of what I'm doing here is I've got the schematics let's see if I can again I'm just getting used to some of these setups I've got here so um, this is the schematic for the uh, sequence card and I'm in the process of a lot of these parts you can't even buy anymore um, a lot of the logic chips were uh, diode transistor logic DTL which came before TTL um, you know they used a lot of just plain FETs because this was a time when FETs were the new fancy play toy so uh, there's some interesting places where they use FET switches to turn signals on and off and now of course you can do have four of those on a 14 pin dip and even that's old and obsolete now but 
Uh, let's see, this dates back to uh, 1969. So, this is getting to be pretty ancient technology. But, we want to try to get this, obviously the machine, this particular chassis, won't do much besides just, you know, modulate an oscillator at this point until I get some, the sequence card working. And, uh, so as a result, I'm in the process of working on using uh, KiCad or KiCad or however you pronounce that. This is uh, basically the schematic that I just showed you there, but I'm having to go through and use modern parts and uh, put that together. So that's what's going on in the shop today. And uh, again, I'm still getting used to my buttons. I've got a little cheap Chinese GoPro up there that works pretty well. And uh, this other one over here, I've just got on a C stand. And uh, I need to work a little bit more on a better universal aiming mechanism here. But it works pretty good for showing and what's going on with the bench. And uh, one of these days I'll do a tour of this Chamber of Horrors that I've got going here. But uh, not today. So that's what's going on in the shop. And uh, until next time.